Hey everyone, today I'll be showing you how to make Instant Pot Pulled Pork. This was so freaking good and I'm really excited to show you guys, so let's get started with the video. Begin by cleaning a 3-4 to four pound pork shoulder. I cleaned my pork shoulder in the sink, I rinsed it with some water, and then I poured some vinegar on it. Then I also used a lime to clean the pork shoulder. I sliced it in half and then squeezed the juice out onto the pork shoulder. Then after squeezing all the juice out of the lime, I rubbed it onto the pork shoulder. Then I let my pork shoulder sit for about two minutes and rinsed it with water and took it out. Make sure to clean your sink after cleaning your pork shoulder. After you finish cleaning your pork shoulder, pat it dry with some paper towels. When you're finished, trim the fat off of your pork shoulder. Then cut your pork shoulder into pieces. When you finish cutting up your pork shoulder, set it to the side. Next, we're going to make our seasoning blend. In a small bowl, mix together 3 tablespoons of light brown sugar, 2 teaspoons of chili powder, 1 teaspoon of cumin, 1 teaspoon of onion powder, 1 teaspoon of garlic powder, 1 teaspoon of paprika, 1 teaspoon of ground mustard, 1 teaspoon of dried oregano, 1 fourth teaspoon of cayenne pepper, 2 teaspoons of salt, and 1 teaspoon of pepper. When you're finished, set your seasonings to the side. Place your pieces of pork shoulder in a large bowl. Then pour about 1-2 to two tablespoons of olive oil on your pieces of pork shoulder. Rub the olive oil onto the pork to make sure each piece is coated. Then add your seasonings. Rub the seasonings onto the pork. Make sure all of your pieces of pork are completely coated in the seasonings. When you're finished, set your pork to the side. Next, in a bowl, add 1 cup of chicken broth, 1 3rd cup of apple cider vinegar, 1 cup of barbecue sauce, 1 teaspoon of liquid smoke, and one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. Then mix everything until well combined. When you're finished, set your mixture to the side. 
Next, set your Instant Pot to saute. Then add two tablespoons of olive oil into your Instant Pot. Once your Instant Pot is hot, sear your pieces of pork shoulder for about one minute on each side. Once you've finished searing all your pieces of pork, take them out of the Instant Pot. Then turn off your Instant Pot and add 1 4th cup of chicken broth. Use a rubber spatula or a wooden spoon to deglaze the bottom of your pot. Then add your pork back into the pot. Once you've added all of your pork, pour in your barbecue sauce mixture from before. Next, place the lid on your Instant Pot and close it. Next. Set the Instant Pot to pressure cook and then press the plus sign button until it reaches 60 minutes. After an hour, do a natural release for 15 minutes. Which basically means that the Instant Pot is going to cool down naturally. All you have to do is leave it alone for the 15 minutes. Next, release the event on your Instant Pot and open the lid. Now that everything is finished cooking, take your pork out of the Instant Pot. This is optional, but you can skim the fat from your leftover barbecue sauce mixture. Place your pieces of pork in a large bowl and then shred them. Use two large forks to shred and pull your pork apart. When you finish shredding your pork, put it back into the Instant Pot. Let your pulled pork soak in the barbecue mixture for about 5 or 10 minutes. This is going to make your pulled pork really juicy. Then take your pork out of the Instant Pot and place it back into the bowl. Next, add 1 cup of barbecue sauce. Mix the barbecue sauce in with the pork and you are all finished. Now that you've finished making your pulled pork, we're going to move on and make our coleslaw. In a small bowl, add one cup of mayonnaise, two tablespoons of Dijon mustard, one tablespoon of lemon juice, 2 tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, 
3 tablespoons of sugar, 3 fourths teaspoon of salt, a half a teaspoon of pepper, and a half a teaspoon of onion powder. Mix everything together until well combined. In a bowl, add 16 ounces of coleslaw mix, and then add your mixture from before. Then mix everything together until well combined. When you're finished, set your coleslaw to the side or place it in the fridge until you're ready to use it. Next, we're going to toast our buns. In a pan over medium heat, add butter. Once your butter has melted, add your buns and toast them until golden brown. By the way, I'm using brioche buns. Once you finish toasting your buns, take them out of the pan and go ahead and assemble your pulled pork sandwich. And this is the finished result. This pulled pork sandwich was so good. It was juicy and it tasted delicious. The pulled pork by itself is really, really good. I had to stop myself from eating it while making this video. The sandwich as a whole was excellent. I was so full after eating it. The coleslaw went with the pulled pork perfectly. 10 out of 10 would totally recommend making this. Oh, and by the way, you can use whatever barbecue sauce you want for this recipe. I use my favorite barbecue sauce, which is from Four Rivers. Alright, that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Everything I used in this video will be down in the description below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye! Hey everyone, today I'll be showing you how to make these crispy and delicious onion rings. Begin by cutting two yellow onions into slices. Make sure to remove the thin outer layer of the onion. Once you finish slicing your onion, pop them out into individual rings. Then place your onions in a bowl of ice water. Soaking your onions in cold water will dilute the sulfur content, giving them a mild and sweeter taste. Next, we're going to make our batter. In a measuring cup or small bowl, add one and a half cups of milk and one egg. Mix the egg and milk together until well combined. When you're finished, set it to the side. Next, in a large bowl, add one cup of flour, one teaspoon of baking powder, one tablespoon of smoked paprika, two teaspoons of garlic powder, one fourth teaspoon of cayenne pepper, one teaspoon of seasoning salt, and half a teaspoon of pepper. 
Then mix everything together until well combined. After you've mixed everything together, add your milk mixture from before. Then mix everything together until well combined. When you finish making your batter, set it to the side. Once you finish making your batter, remove your onions from the cold water and pat them dry. Next, set up your coating station. Add about a cup of flour in one bowl and a cup of panko crumbs in another bowl. Then, begin coating your onion rings. First, coat your onion in flour. Then, in your batter, and finally in your panko breadcrumbs. Then repeat this process until you've coated all of your onion rings. When you're finished, you can begin frying them. In a pot or deep fryer, heat vegetable oil up to around 350 degrees. And then fry your onion rings for about 2-3 to three minutes or until golden. Make sure to cook your onion rings in batches of 4 or 5. You don't want to overcrowd your pot or deep fryer. Flip your onion rings every now and then for an even color. When your onion rings have finished cooking, take them out and place them on a wire rack. Once you've finished frying your onion rings, season them with salt. Next, we're going to make the onion ring sauce. In a bowl, add a half a cup of mayonnaise, two teaspoons of prepared horseradish, one teaspoon of Dijon mustard, one teaspoon of lemon juice, one teaspoon of apple cider vinegar, two teaspoons of ketchup, one fourth teaspoon of sugar, one fourth teaspoon of salt, and 1 4th teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Mix everything together until well combined. Now you can go ahead and plate everything up. And this is the finished result. These onion rings were so freaking good. I don't even particularly like onion rings all that much, but these, these were good, especially with the sauce. The sauce was really, really delicious. It went with the onion rings so well. The onion rings were nice and crispy and well seasoned. Also soaking the onions in cold water totally works because the onions were surprisingly sweet and it didn't have that bitter taste. This was really easy and fun to make, so I totally recommend. 
all right that's it for this video thank you guys so much for watching everything i used in this video will be down in the description below don't forget to like comment and subscribe bye Hey everyone, today I'll be teaching you how to make crab ragoon, so let's get started with the video. First, chop 8 ounces of imitation crab meat into small pieces. When you're finished, set it to the side. Next, in a large bowl, add 8 ounces of softened cream cheese, your imitation crab meat, 1 3rd cup of green onions, half a tablespoon of minced garlic, 1 teaspoon of sugar, a half a teaspoon of salt, a half a teaspoon of pepper, 1 teaspoon of soy sauce, 1 teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce, and 1 4th teaspoon of sesame oil. Mix everything together until well combined. When you're finished, set your filling to the side. Now we're going to assemble our crab rangoons. Get a wonton wrapper and then place one to two teaspoons of your filling at the center of your wrapper. Then brush the edges of your wrapper with a bit of water. Next, take the corners of one side and pinch them together, and then do the same thing to the other side. After you've done that, bring both sides together. Then pinch the center and along the sides. When you're finished, your rangoon should look like this. Repeat this process until you run out of filling. When you finish assembling your rangoons, place them inside a deep fryer or pot. Then fry your crab ragoons at 350 degrees for about 3 minutes or until crispy and golden brown. Make sure to cook your rangoons in batches of 4 or 5 and when you finish cooking them, take them out of the pot or fryer and place them on a wire rack. Repeat this process until you finish frying all of your crab rangoons. Once you finish frying your crab rangoons, you can go ahead and plate them up. And this is the finished result. These were delicious. They're crispy and they tasted great with the sweet chili sauce. 
I ate like five of them after I finished filming. They were pretty easy to make as well. And they came out looking so cute and tiny and adorable. Alright, that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Everything I used in this video will be down in the description below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye! Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make the TikTok viral queso. And I'll also be showing you how to make these amazing nachos with that queso. So let's get started with the video. We're going to begin by preparing our ingredients. First, dice one tomato. One red onion. And two jalapenos. Then finely chop some cilantro. When you're finished, set your ingredients to the side. Now we're going to make some guacamole. First, cut open two avocados and remove the seeds. Then, using a spoon, scoop out the avocado and place it in a bowl. Next, use a potato masher or a fork to mash the avocados. Once you have finished mashing up the avocados, add 1 to 2 tablespoons of lime juice, a quarter cup of diced red onions, 1 tablespoon of diced jalapenos, 1 tablespoon of cilantro, and a half a teaspoon of salt. Then mix everything together until well combined. When you're finished, set your guacamole to the side. Now we're going to move on and make some pico de gallo. In a bowl, add the diced tomato we prepared before, a half a cup of diced onions, one tablespoon of diced jalapenos, one tablespoon of cilantro, the juice of one lime, and a half a teaspoon of salt. Mix everything together until well combined and then set your pico de gallo to the side. Next, we're going to make the queso. Cut one pound of sliced American cheese into small pieces. Then, cut one pound of sliced pepper jack cheese into small pieces as well. Next, in a large bowl over low heat, add the American cheese and pepper jack cheese. Then add one diced jalapeno, two 12 ounce cans of evaporated milk, and 1 4th teaspoon of cumin. Mix everything together until well combined and then continuously stir the mixture until the cheese has completely melted. You'll know when the queso is done once the cheese is melted and everything is well combined. Once you have finished making the queso, we can move on to the next step. 
Next, we're going to cook some ground meat to go on our tacos. In a pan over medium heat, add olive oil. Then add one pound of the ground meat of your choice. I'm using turkey meat. After you've placed it in the pan, break it up. Then add your seasonings. I added seasoned salt, pepper, onion powder, and garlic powder. Then continue to cook your ground meat until it has browned. Once you have finished cooking your ground meat, prepare a packet of taco seasoning mix. To do this, all you have to do is mix one packet of taco seasoning and two thirds cup of water together. When you're finished, add the taco seasoning to your ground meat. Then mix everything together and let your mixture simmer for about four to five minutes. During this time, make sure to stir occasionally. Once you have finished cooking your ground meat, you can begin assembling your nachos. Begin by adding some tortilla chips to a plate. Then add some shredded Mexican blend cheese, the ground meat we prepared before, some queso, some sliced jalapenos, and some pico de gallo. Then repeat the same layers as before. Next, drizzle on some sour cream, add a scoop of guacamole, and finally sprinkle some cilantro on top. And that's it! You are all finished making your nachos, and this is the finished result! These nachos were so good, and the queso tasted just like the queso you would get at a restaurant. The nachos and queso were super easy to make. 10 out of 10 would totally recommend. Alright, that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Everything I used in this video will be down in the description below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye! Hey everyone, today I'll be showing you how to make mozzarella onion rings, so let's get started with the video. Begin by peeling and cutting two yellow onions. When you finish cutting your onions, separate the rings. Next, slice mozzarella into even strips. Next, place a small onion ring in the center of a large onion ring. Then fill the gap in between the two rings with strips of mozzarella cheese. Repeat this process with the rest of your onions.
Then place your onion rings in the freezer for an hour. Next, in a bowl, add four eggs. Then beat your eggs until smooth. When you're finished, set your eggs to the side. In another bowl, add breadcrumbs. Then season your breadcrumbs with seasoned salt, pepper, and garlic powder. Mix your seasonings and breadcrumbs together until well combined. Then set it to the side. Now in one last bowl, add one cup of flour, a half a teaspoon of seasoned salt, a half a teaspoon of pepper, a half a teaspoon of garlic powder, a half a teaspoon of paprika, and one fourth teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Mix everything together until well combined, and then set your flour to the side. If you want to make hot Cheeto mozzarella onion rings, then all you have to do is crush up some hot Cheetos in a food processor or a blender. And then place them into a baking pan. So instead of using breadcrumbs, you can use hot Cheetos to coat your onion rings. I decided to make both hot Cheeto and regular mozzarella onion rings. After an hour has passed, take your onion rings out of the freezer and begin coating them. First, coat your onion rings in flour. Then in the eggs. After that, in your breadcrumbs. And then coat your onion ring one more time in the eggs. And one last time in the breadcrumbs. Repeat this process until you've coated all of your onion rings. When you finish coating your onion rings, you can begin frying them. In a pot or deep fryer, heat vegetable oil up to 350 degrees. Then fry your onion rings for about 2-3 to three minutes or until golden brown. When your onion rings have finished cooking, take them out and place them on a wire rack. Make sure to fry your onion rings in batches of 3 to 4 so you don't overcrowd your pot or deep fryer. Once you finish frying all of your onion rings, you can go ahead and enjoy. And this is the finished result! These mozzarella onion rings came out great! Oh, and don't forget to serve them with a side of marinara sauce. 
This recipe is simple and easy to make. If you like mozzarella sticks and you like onion rings, I think this would be perfect for you. Alright, that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Everything I used in this video will be down in the description below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye! This is how the hot Cheeto mozzarella onion rings came out. Hey everyone, today I'll be teaching you how to make fried jalapeno stuffed shrimp with Cajun fries. This was really delicious, so let's get started with the video. We're going to begin by hollowing out 8 jalapenos. Cut off the stem and then cut out the inside. When you're finished, rinse the inside of your jalapenos to make sure you've gotten everything out. Once you've finished rinsing your jalapenos, dry them off. When you've finished drying your jalapenos, set them to the side. Now we're going to deshell and devein 8 pieces of shrimp while leaving the tail on the shrimp. Once you've peeled and deveined your shrimp, go ahead and place them inside a bowl. Next, season your shrimp. I seasoned my shrimp with pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, Old Bay, and Cajun seasoning. Toss your shrimp in the bowl to make sure each piece of shrimp is well coated in your seasonings. When you're finished, set your shrimp to the side. Now we can begin assembling our jalapeno stuffed shrimp. Using a knife, add cream cheese inside your jalapeno. Then, place as much of the shrimp as you can inside your jalapeno. Repeat this process until you've stuffed all of your jalapenos.
When you finish stuffing your jalapenos, set them to the side. Next, pour a half a cup of buttermilk into a bowl. Then add one egg and beat your egg and buttermilk together until well combined. When you're finished, set your mixture to the side. Now, in a dish, add some fish fry. Then add your seasonings. I added pepper, Cajun seasoning, and Old Bay. Then mix everything together until well combined. When you're finished, set your mixture to the side. Now we're going to begin coating our jalapeno stuffed shrimp. First, coat your jalapeno stuffed shrimp in your buttermilk mixture. Then, coat it in your fish fry mixture. Once it is coated, set it to the side. Repeat this process until all your jalapeno stuffed shrimp are coated. Now that you've coated all your jalapeno stuffed shrimp, we can start frying them. Fill a deep fryer or a pot with vegetable oil. Heat your oil up to 375 degrees. Once your oil is hot, go ahead and fry your jalapeno stuffed shrimp. Fry your jalapeno stuffed shrimp for about two to three minutes or until golden brown. When everything is finished frying, place it on a paper towel covered plate or on a cooling rack. Oh, and let me tell you, these smelled amazing coming out of the fryer. Repeat this process until you've fried all your jalapeno stuffed shrimp. Once you finish frying your jalapeno stuffed shrimp, we're going to go ahead and make a sauce for the jalapeno stuffed shrimp and for our Cajun fries. In a small bowl, add a half a cup of mayonnaise, one or one half teaspoon of mustard, one teaspoon of lemon juice, half a tablespoon of Old Bay hot sauce or regular hot sauce, and one fourth teaspoon of Cajun seasoning. Mix everything together until well combined. I don't usually measure when I'm making the sauce, everything was just like an estimated guess, but make sure you adjust the sauce to your taste. Once you've finished making your sauce, set it to the side and begin making your Cajun fries. In a small bowl, add one teaspoon of onion powder, one teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of Cajun seasoning, one teaspoon of seasoned salt, one fourth teaspoon of cayenne pepper, and one fourth teaspoon of smoked paprika. Mix everything together until well combined. When you're finished, set your seasoning mixture to the side. 
Cook some fries in the oven or in an air fryer and then place them inside a large bowl. Pour some of your seasoning mixture over your fries and then toss the fries in the seasonings until everything is well coated. When you're finished, you can go ahead and start plating everything up. And this is the finished result. This is a really simple recipe, it's very easy to make, and it was delicious. Like I said before, they smelled so good. I had to keep myself from eating all the Cajun fries because they tasted really good, especially with the sauce. I got the idea to make these fried jalapeno stuffed shrimp from a TikTok I saw, so I'll have the link to that down in the description. When I saw the TikTok, I thought it looked delicious, so I just had to make it. Overall, this dish is easy, simple, and delicious. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Alright, that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Everything I used in this video will be down in the description below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye! Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make these tasty, cheesy, garlic parmesan pizza rolls, so let's get started with the video. We're going to begin by making the tomato sauce. In a saucepan over medium heat, add 28 ounces of crushed tomatoes, 2 tablespoons of tomato paste, 2 tablespoons of sugar, a half a teaspoon of salt, a half a teaspoon of garlic powder, one and a half teaspoons of dried oregano, and a half a teaspoon of dried basil. Mix everything together until well combined, and then heat your sauce up until it becomes warm. After you've heated up your sauce, take it off the heat and set it to the side. Next, shred some mozzarella cheese. Once you have finished preparing your ingredients, you can now assemble your pizza rolls. First, place a wonton wrapper on a cutting board. Then add one slice of pepperoni, some mozzarella cheese, about a teaspoon of tomato sauce, and a bit more mozzarella cheese. Next, brush the edges of the wonton wrapper with water. Fold the diagonal end of the wonton wrapper over the filling. Then fold the opposite end over that to form this tube shape. And after you've done that, brush the ends with a bit more water. Next, fold the last two ends of the wonton wrapper to the center of the pizza roll. Make sure your pizza roll is sealed shut so none of the filling spills out when you fry them. Once you finish folding your pizza roll, it should be a perfect square. Repeat this process until you've made all the pizza rolls that you want, or until you run out of ingredients. Whichever comes first. Once you have finished making all of your pizza rolls, you can now begin frying them. 
Fill a pot or deep fryer with vegetable oil and then heat it up to around 350 degrees. Once the oil is hot, fry your pizza rolls for around 2 to 3 minutes or until they have puffed up and are lightly golden brown. Make sure to cook your pizza rolls in batches so you don't overcrowd the pot or deep fryer. Once your pizza rolls have finished cooking, take them out and place them on a wire rack. Now that you have finished making your pizza rolls, we're going to move on and make the garlic butter. In a bowl, melt 4 tablespoons of butter. Then add 1 tablespoon of minced garlic, 1 teaspoon of parsley, and 1 teaspoon of red pepper flakes. Then mix everything together until well combined. Now that you've finished making the garlic butter, we can move on to the next step. Place the pizza rolls in a bowl and then add the garlic butter and some grated parmesan cheese. Add as much or as little as you want. Then toss them until they are completely coated. When you're finished, all you have to do is plate it up and enjoy. And this is the finished result. These were so freaking good. They were way better than the store-bought pizza rolls. And dipping them in the leftover sauce makes it even better. These pizza rolls were simple and easy to make, so I totally recommend giving them a try. And just look at this cheese pull. Alright, that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Everything I used in this video will be down in the description below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye! Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make the viral TikTok chopped sandwich, so let's get started with the video. First, add some shredded lettuce to a cutting board. Next, place a couple of slices of the deli meat of your choice on top of the lettuce. I added about 3-4 to four slices of turkey. Then add some sliced provolone cheese, sliced tomatoes, sliced onions, and sliced banana peppers. Next, take a sharp knife and chop everything up really well. Make sure to mix everything up while you're chopping. Once you finish chopping everything up, add some deli dressing. By the way, if you don't have deli dressing, you can just use olive oil and Italian seasoning instead. Next, add some red wine vinegar. Mayonnaise. Salt. And pepper. Then continue to chop and mix everything together until well combined. When you're finished, scoop the chopped mixture into a sub roll.
And that's it, you are all finished. All you have to do now is plate it and enjoy. And this is the finished result. This chopped sandwich was absolutely delicious. It's an easy and quick sandwich with a bit of everything in every bite. By the way, you can customize your sandwich any way you like. This is just the way I like to make my chopped sandwich. Alright, that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Everything I used in this video will be down in the description below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye!